Now, if you missed last week's episode, be sure to click the link above here and learn how to make the stainless steel that you see on screen. We went ahead and walked through every little detail of this guy, and I know stainless steel is a pretty popular finish that a lot of people want to nail, so be sure to check that out. Now, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need three things. One, a cup of coffee. Two, project files from willgibbons.com downloads. And three, some classic 80s tunes. Today, we're going to keep it metal. And we're going to try to render this worn steel finish from an old Allen wrench. All right, so the first step we have to do after opening Keyshot is import our file that you have downloaded from my website. Go ahead and take the default import settings. Okay, so we want to go ahead and throw on some better lighting. I'm going to use the three panels straight 4K. I'll hit C on the keyboard to go to a white background. And let's double click on our model and turn it into metal. Let's add a little roughness. Now let's open its material graph. So the first thing we're going to do is cover this metal with a plastic label. I can close my library now. And uh, we'll go ahead and right click, materials, plastic. Add it as a label. Let's make it a dark brown color, kind of like that. And let's add a little bit of roughness. Yeah, we'll just do 0.05. OK, and then let's go ahead and wear away this label. So let's right click, go down to textures, find ourselves a curvature. We're going to hit C to preview the curvature. We want the positive curvature, or the edges, to become black. So let's set positive to black and leave the other two white. So we now have our edges exposed. I'm also going to turn off this radius and pixels here and use real world uh, units. So I'll go down to 0.5 millimeters. There we go. So we have a nice white and black mask. And I'm going to get out of preview with C and plug this into the opacity of the plastic label. So right there, we have already exposed the edges of our wrench. We're looking pretty good. Now we need to expose the inner details on the edges. I'm sorry, on the flat areas. but also, this worn edge is a little bit too perfect. So in case we want to make this a little less uniform, we can do that as well. So let's go ahead and right click and get another texture, this time camouflage. And we're going to go ahead and hit C to preview camouflage. We'll set it to 1 millimeter or 0.5. And we're going to set uh, everything else except for color number 1 to white. So we have a black and white mask. I will turn on mix colors, and I'm going to go ahead and take the spray up to probably um, three maybe, and I'm gonna take this down even smaller. So 0.25, there we go. So if I want, I can plug this into one of the other um, channels for the curvature, or we could composite it. So for example, I can go down to our um, utilities, color composite, and we can go ahead and plug this into our opacity, this into our source, and this into the background. And because we have the black and grays, and I want that to darken, uh, let's see, I want, the, I want white areas to interrupt these black lines here. And we have white areas in here. I'll make this a little smaller. Let's just do 0.1. And let's go ahead and set this color composite to screen. And you can see right there, we have imperfect exposed edges. So that's going to give us a little bit more of that look that we're after. Now, I want to also work on this inner detail. We can't forget about that. So we're going to, of course, use uh, some other textures. And we want to right click in here, go ahead and find a granite. Go ahead and hit C to preview that. Let's make it white. And let's scale it really down uh, small, uh, one. Let's do, um, let's do point, uh, two five. So very, very small. I want to, I want to capture all these little bumpy details here. And right now I'm actually going to be plugging this into a displace node. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go into geometry and displace. And when I plug in displace to geometry and I plug the granite into displace, let's go into the displace settings. Set the displacement height to 0 0.075 or so. 
and then um, take our triangle size down to point, uh, point 0.1 or 0.05 maybe. And I'm going to hit execute. Uh, now, if you got a system that's not super powerful, this might take a second. Um, you can hear my computer making noise. Now, it looks like our surface has kind of exploded. Uh, this happens because the normals on these fillets are facing the wrong direction. Um, we can try fixing this uh, with the edit geometry. And I can try edit normals and make sure the object is selected while I calculate vertex normals and hit apply. And uh, let's see, I can try to re-execute and see if that works. So far that did not fix the issue. So our backup solution is going to be to disconnect this, hit execute, right click on the model, go down to retessellate. Now that's only an option if you've got NURBS data in here, but we do. So I'm gonna go ahead and tessellate so we can see what our model looks like right now. So there's our edges. And I wanna take my max edge length down to maybe 1% and hit tessellate once again to make these a little bit more detailed. Let's go ahead and hit apply and done. So now let's plug this back in and see how this goes. Money. So this is what we were looking for. We've got the micro texture detail going on in here, these really small bumps. And this is coming from our displacement. Now, um, you know, we can play with the size of these a little bit if we want to. This is looking a little bit harsh, uh, if you ask me. So I'm gonna go ahead into my displace height and make this smaller. So 0, 0.0, um, I don't know, 2.5. Let's give that a shot. That's looking quite a bit better. Um, we can also go, we can go somewhere in between there. We could also go even smaller with the uh, granite texture if we really wanted to. Um, although at this point, I'm looking at the reference photo and I don't think we have to really go any smaller than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that probably where it is right now. And then what I'll do is go ahead and worry about these inner details. So if I wanna expose or play with these uh, flat faces here, uh, we could take our curvature here where remember it says zero curvature is set to um, nothing right now. We could look at our granite with C. It's got these nice little details here. And we could use these to, uh, you know, give this some more texture, or we could even grab a different, you know, noise texture, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to use uh, Noise Fractal. And let's make this guy real small. Let's go 0.3. And then let's plug this into the zero curvature. And we can see that it's too dark, meaning this texture has got too much black in it, which pretty much just exposed those flat surfaces. So let's go ahead and put in All right, so here's what we gotta do. Uh, this is getting even lighter, and the reason is because if we look upstream, our color composite is set to screen, and it's actually, um, the whole thing is, is taking this camouflage and combining the two and making it too bright. So in fact, we need to, I think, invert our noise fractal. So let's go ahead and take this and just do a color invert. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. We didn't need that color adjust there. So that's what our, here's what our curvature looks like. Again, the whiter it is, the less we're going to see the underlying color or texture. Um, and then the blacker it is, of course, the more we'll see. So right there, we're looking pretty good. Um, if you want these, these edges a little more crisp, a little more exposed here, we can fix that, of course. So with our color, uh, or sorry, with our curvature, we're just going to add um, another color to number. And this way we can take our input from and just darken those black areas even more. And then, of course, the other thing that's affecting that is the camouflage. So if we look at our camo, we can also turn off mixed colors and it's not going to blend quite so well. It's going to have more black and white. And that right there will go ahead and give us that nice kind of shiny edge. And if that's still too much, um, then we can go into our camo and we can just back this down. 
So we can take our, um, actually let's use our color composite and we can take this and reduce the amount of uh, the effect that the camo has, the amount of influence it has. That's looking pretty good overall though, I think. So if we zoom out, we can go ahead and close our material graph and see what this looks like. I'm also noticing it's definitely getting a little bit slow. Anytime you use curvature, things are gonna slow down. So that's something to watch out for. Um, and this is looking actually pretty good. You know, if you want more areas uh, that are more random and, and you know, have some more scratches and stuff, you just have to play with the scale and the size of something like that camo uh, procedural texture in there. Let's see if there's anything else we might want to do. All right, so I'm seeing the fractal pattern here on the sides and I don't want to do that. I don't want to see that. So I'm going to go ahead into our material graph and take our noise fractal and see if I can just uh, reduce the contrast here, I guess, and play with the shape of it a little bit. So let's take our, let's see if we can play with our uh, fall off, maybe with our levels. I feel like that does look a little bit better, definitely a little more texture. It may just be too big too. Let's take it down to 0.5. So it's even smaller. And maybe we even take our granite down just a, just a little bit too. Let's do 0.2. I'll go ahead and refresh the geometry node. All right, to finish this guy off, what we're gonna do is get one more label. I'm gonna go down to uh, materials. We're gonna do one more level or layer of paint. We're gonna add this as a label. We're gonna darken this whole thing up. Almost go to a dark black. And what I want to do is just have some more darker areas in here. So I'm going to go ahead and get another curvature. Down to textures and curvature. And hit C to preview. And this time we're going to go positive curvature is going to be black again. These other guys will be white. And we're going to turn off radiuses and pixels. We'll turn off sync. We'll set this to two or one. There we go. We'll take our zero curvature and reduce this. There we go. So what this will do is this will basically allow some of the other stuff underneath it to show through. Something like this. So again, the whiter the areas, the more of this label we're gonna see. Let's go ahead and plug this into the opacity. And then if you wanna see the difference with that or without, you can just click on the connector, go to disable, it's a little bit lighter, enable, and then we can play with these colors from here. So if we wanna to go to the zero curvature, and darken this guy a bit. Oops, we got disconnected here. There we go. So if we go ahead and play with this again, if we go darker, it's gonna be more, have less of an effect. If we go up to white, it's gonna put more paint on basically. So from here, you can more or less adjust the severity of the kind of paint loss or that coating, whatever you wanna call that. Same with the positive curvature. So if we make this a little bit less black, then we're going to start to cover this whole thing up with paint as well. So you can play with the severity of that where. So basically what you could do is take this node and we could name it and call this um, paint cover or where. And then this one individual node here is the one that you would play with while having the rest of this all taking care of the rest of the material. This is the one label that basically covers this whole thing up. And you could even change the colors of it. You know, if you wanted it to be like blue paint on top of this thing, you could. So it could be like a painted object that got worn away. It could be, you know, kind of an orange or a red. Go yellow. And this way you're allowing some of that, that other kind of rust and wear and the discoloration underneath to come through. So yeah. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and say. Uh, that'll be the conclusion of this tutorial. We'll go ahead and hit this to uh, realign everything. So that's what our, our node graph or material graph looks like in the end. And the other cool thing is that you can save this, of course, and then just reapply it as you need to. And, um, you know, go ahead and name this entire material and you can call this, you know, very worn painted metal. And then you can go ahead and, uh, oops, that's a node name. We want to take that and actually plug that in up here. And then you can save this to your, your folder, you know, my materials or your custom folder, whatever you use. 
So just to match the reference photo, I'm gonna go ahead and take the color of this paint back to just this black color pretty much. And um, we'll go ahead and close this out and render this up and see how the final looks. To really finish this image, we're gonna go ahead and hit a ground plane, control G for that. All right, we'll go ahead and set our camera, perspective, go to a more conservative, let's see, 105. And right now I might as well set up my thumbnail, maybe set a background color to something other than white. There we go. Make sure the ground plane has specularity. So we have our reflection. Let's make sure I'm in product mode. And let's make sure that background or that ground plane, sorry, has a little roughness. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. And until next week's episode, happy rendering.